The suspended press is the big power exercise of the entire workout. It's incredibly demanding and that's why we start with it on the second day of our, of our program. So what we don't want to do is make sure that we've got the TRX fully lengthened and configured into single handle mode. And to begin with, getting into this movement is very much like how we get into the suspended lunge. Dropping a foot in, but now the trick is we need to pivot around and face the anchor and kind of hop our way backwards a little bit, putting ourselves in what's going to look a lot like a handstand position. With one leg up and one leg down, this is the regression, believe it or not, of the movement. Here we can stabilize with this leg and start by lowering our crown directly to the ground, working through as full of a range of motion as we can. Now, as we get more and more strength, we can actually move ourselves back further or come all the way up into this handstand position. Again, lowering our crown right to the ground and straight up. We'll try and do one more rep, right down, right up. As soon as you fatigue, bring that foot to the ground and you can finish your set in this position until you've built enough strength to do all of your repetitions in that fully inverted position. It's incredibly demanding, it's incredibly effective, and that's the incline press. Those people who have smaller feet or low profile shoes may have difficulty maintaining their foot position in the foot cradle. So in that case, once you've dropped your toe into the TRX, most of you won't have any problem at all with the handle centered over top of the foot. As I said, if you do have those low profile shoes or smaller feet, you can just drop that handle to the side and that will ensure that your foot stays solidly in the TRX throughout the exercise. The atomic push-up is really just a fusion between our suspended crunch and a push-up. So to begin with, we want to assume a, a plank position with our toes suspended in the TRX. Now, we're going to drop into a push-up nice and deep, and then the hips come straight up in the air and knees pull in. Just like all of our suspended positions, we don't want to see a sag at the bottom of the movement. Straight down and straight up. Now, if we wanted to regress that, this movement, especially as we fatigue in later parts of the sets, what we can do is drop our knees to the ground, do our push up from the knees, and then come up into a plank and pull the knees under, straight down. This gives our body a break, both our core and takes something off of the push up itself. In later stages, as we really try and progress this, we can change this knees to chest to a pike. So it comes straight down and drives straight up overhead. And this is incredibly demanding movement, both for our, for our upper body and for our core as we drive into the atomic push-up. The single leg chest press follows two incredibly demanding upper body exercises. To begin with, we're gonna have a narrow stance in this chest press position. We can just do a couple like this to give you the feel of the action. To get to the real stability component, what we're going to do is lift one foot just off the ground and back. This is bringing us to a one foot balance which creates a rotational force around the spine, really engages our core as well as demanding a lot from our upper body. As we want to progress this further, we can take this foot out wide. Now, as we do this, we don't want you leaning over to this side, okay? That's one common compensation. And we also don't want to see this hip drive that way. If we see that, again, that's a compensation we're not looking for. We want a straight line, nose straight over top of toe. This hip not translating too far to the one side. Nice wide stance, you're gonna feel your glute working a little bit and a lot of rotational force around the core, demanding lots of core engagement. Now, if you're just coming off an injury and you wanna regress this exercise, you can use a basic foot spot. We're bringing your, bringing your foot out in front, lowering yourself down, and that will help you get out of the down part of the motion, keeping your shoulders nice and safe as you go through your re rehabilitation or get your strength up high enough so that you can do the single leg chest press. The elevated back row is another one of those incredibly difficult deep upper body exercises. So to begin with, you're going to want to shorten the TRX all the way up and assume as steep a position as you possibly can. In most cases, with your feet right against the object that you're anchored to. Here we can see we've got a nice straight, nice straight body and we're going to pull your chest all the way up to your hands keeping a nice head position, trying to look up at the sky at the top of the movement, really engaging the whole postural chain. You can have at the bottom just a slight dip of the tailbone, 
That's fantastic all the way through. What you want to avoid is dropping your head towards your hands as you pull up, turning it into a crunch, and really driving through your neck and, and anterior chain. That's going to engage your biceps and take the stress away from your back, which is where we want to put it. Now, if you want to regress this exercise, you can just back off of a little bit, assuming a, a less steep angle, and that'll work fine. If you want to progress it and you're working on a flat single sided anchor, you'll actually be able to even elevate your feet up on it. If you're working in a pure overhead anchor, you may find that you have to over shorten the TRX, allowing you to get very, very deep to make it happen. In order to do that, you can just grab that loop that Randy just showed you and over shorten it, and that will allow you to get right underneath the TRX, making for a very demanding back upper body exercise. I know you're going to enjoy it. The power pull is a great unilateral exercise that brings into play all sorts of things from back strength, rotational movement, shoulder stability. It's a tremendously functional exercise. We'll show it to you right now. You're going to want to shorten the TRX to its fully shortened position and configure it into single handle mode. Once you're there, we're going to get this good strong grip, strong wide stance, high elbow position, and you're going to lower back and onto that movement just like this. Now, as we go through a couple of these repetitions, let's have a look at what's going on in Randy's back. Let's do a couple reps here, Rand. You see he's got this nice high elbow position. We trained a mid-back in the last exercise. Now we're getting this upper back, as well as rotational movement. As he rotates through, we're really engaging through his core, keeping good, strong foot position. That's giving us good rotational core movement, strong uh, scapular retraction, as well as shoulder stability and back strength. Now, as we switch hands and go to progress this exercise from where we were, if you're training with a partner, now one way of progression is obviously making it steeper. To regress it, you can make it less steep. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you're training with a training partner, there's a great opportunity to be a little bit evil. Give him a hand target, he can come up pushing against it. Now we want lateral force that way. In this case, I can give him a little bit of a push all the way down. To begin with, I'm going to push him all the way down right through. He's got to resist that coming all the way up, resisting it all the way through. A further progression is to make it very plyometric where I'm going to throw him down. He's got to decelerate it, come back to me and make it very combative at the top. Let's do two more of these, Randy. One more. Very combative fighting with me. Good. And all the way down. That's a tremendous way to progress that exercise if you've got the luxury of training with a partner. Now, with a regression, one of the things you're going to want to do as you hit that shallow position is to make sure you're using your feet in an offset foot position. And this will give you the room you need to move through a, a full range of motion in a more shallow position. So you can see Randy's got an offset position. He's gone back. And now he's able to come up and still go through that full range while getting all the benefits of working unilaterally with such a big rotational movement. The swimmer's pull is another great movement, primarily for the back, but again, having lots of shoulder stability, lots of stuff going on with your core as well. So to begin with, we want to make sure we've adjusted the TRX into its fully lengthened configuration, and it's really important that, we using, that we're using that offset foot position. So once we've got that offset position, hands are down. One of the, really, uh, the real key points is making sure we've got a rotation of the shoulders or a high elbow, very similar to the swim stroke. So now we're going to drive all the way through, arms stay nice and straight, chest is lifted and head is back. Very, very key. We don't want to turn this into a row with our elbows dropped. We want to keep that good internal rotation of the shoulders driving through. Now, as we look at this from the back, we can see what's going on here. We're getting, again, a good retraction here. That head's nice and high and great contraction all the way through the lats. If you want to make this slightly more functional, what we can do is at the bottom of the movement, let that tailbone drop just a little bit, and then we're getting a back extension that leads into it, making for a great open connect chain movement or close connect chain movement that drives all the way through from the hips all the way up to the neck. Very, very functional, very, very effective, and great back training. The Y deltoid raise is the first of three in our shoulder series. Now, they're very, very similar, but we'll show them each to you separately. This first one, we want to again make sure the TRX is, is adjusted to its fully lengthened position and again using that offset position. 
Starting off, our hands are actually parallel, maybe a slight down angle with the thumbs. What we're going to do is come straight up overhead into a Y position. Again, very important to keep our head nice and high. Really, our eyes should be focused about three feet or more over top of the anchor point. Driving straight up, rocking from our back foot onto the front foot. Again, hips lead the motion to some extent, and we're really looking at getting a strong shoulder engagement right back here. Good range of motion through the shoulders. And if we want to make it slightly more functional, we can even drop this hip down and driving up, creating a back extension that leads into the movement of the Y raise. It's a great exercise in the first of our shoulder series. The T deltoid fly is very similar to the previous movement in the shoulder series. We're going to use the same offset position. We're going to find our distance the same way. So let's find that first coming straight up, find our end range. There it is, high chest, eyes are in the same place. All of the things that apply to the last one apply to this. The difference is, as we go through this, is we're going to start off with our hands directly beside each other and go all the way down, all the way up, really targeting this mid-back and strong shoulder retraction. Coming all the way up, head is high, and again, if we want to make it more functional, we just have to drop those hips straight down and coming up. The way we regress it is simply to move our feet back a little bit. The way to progress is, is go into a deeper position. It's the T-deltoid fly. It's very, very effective, and you're going to start to fatigue by the time you get to this within the program. The low shoulder fly is the final exercise in our shoulder series. By this point in your workouts, you're going to feel a lot of fatigue, but we're really going to work on the low trapezius, low shoulders, mid-back, tremendous exercise. Again, everything is exactly the same. Your feet are offset. In this case, your hands are slightly tilted thumbs out, which will lead us into that low shoulder fly movement. So we found our end position right here. We've got a nice, good offset foot position. Shoulders are back, head is up. This is exactly where we want to end up. So let's drop into it, straight down and straight back. Now you're going to feel, one, you're pre-fatigued. Two, this exercise you'll be a little bit weaker in and you may need this back foot to be a little bit further back than in some of the other exercises. Again, we've got that head nice and high and we can make it more functional by dropping the hip. Now with any of these exercises in the shoulder series, the progression and regression is exactly the same. We really just apply vector resistance. So if we want it to be more difficult, we just bring our foot position a little bit further in. And remember, little, little changes make big differences with this one. So don't make huge adjustments. That's going to make it quite a bit steeper. If you need to regress this action, you may have to come back up into the shallower position and actually step onto that front foot, which will allow you the range of motion with this big long movement. So Randy will show it this to you here. As he comes back, he can easily get out of the bottom and that step onto the front foot gives him the range that he needs. The high back extension is a great core exercise for the whole posterior chain. Also very demanding after completing the shoulder sequence we just finished. So to begin with, again, we want it fully lengthened. After we've done this, your feet should be close together, about shoulder width apart, I suppose, with our arms straight overhead, and there's the end of the movement. Now, the most important thing here is the bending comes from the hips. So we want to lower our tailbone as low as it'll possibly go. Our head stays between our hands and driving straight up, trying to engage that low back as we go overhead. Randy's coming up on his toes to increase the, the amount of force he's getting. So here you can see he's dropping right through his hips, driving up through his low back and up high overhead. Again, just like any other exercise where we can apply vector resistance. If you want to make it more difficult, move a little bit steeper with your feet. If you want to make it easier, bring it slightly more shallow. You may have to use an offset foot position depending upon your surface or, or how shallow you're planning on going. Now, in a later progression, if you want to really challenge your whole low back postural chain, what we can do is add a postural squat to this. So here we dropped in, we come up. Now holding this position, we squat down in that overhead squat and straight up and then drop again into that high back extension. Very, very demanding, very, very effective. Great for prehabilitation, preventing injuries and creating strong back strength. The suspended pendulum is an incredibly dynamic and effective core exercise that integrates rotation as well as just general stability of the spine. So well, to begin with, we're going to have our toes suspended in the TRX and we're going to work from a push-up position. So as Randy brings his 
hands down, comes up. Again, we don't want to see any sagging of the hips through this exercise like that. That's going to put too much pressure on the low back. We want to avoid it. Once we're out here, we get the pleasure of swinging from side to side. So start to swinging from side to side. Notice Randy's got great rotation to associate his got good thoracic rotation, hips swing from side to side, moving back and forth. Now, you can pause and rest for a second there, Randy. One of the things that will happen if you're not careful is you will have a strong and a weak side. Make sure you pay close attention that you're getting the same mobility to the left as you have to the right. The side that you're comfortable with, you'll rotate to to no problem. If you find yourself going flatter to one side, that means that you're weaker to that side and you're trying to protect it from exposing it to gravity. Make sure you're twisting equally from side to side and you're going to get a ton from this dynamic and effective exercise. The suspended oblique pike is actually progressed through the course of this whole program and it begins with the suspended oblique crunch. So we're going to start with that. To start off with, we've got our TRX adjusted. The, the uh, foot cradles are about eight to 12 inches off the ground and we're gonna be in a push-up position. So from that push-up position, we're gonna drive both knees up to this near elbow, just like that. You can see Randy's getting good rotation here in his pelvis. His knee's coming straight forward, nice and strong, and he's really decelerating that nicely as he comes back. Now, the next progression from there is to actually take this right hand and move it forward. Now he's got a bit of a long, longer of a lever length and it makes it quite a bit more difficult. Now from here we can move into the pike position. So we'll bring our hands back to being parallel and in this case he's going to drive his whole hips off the ground while keeping his legs straight. So he's coming straight up and you can see this time he's really exposed this side of himself to gravity coming up nice and high and you can see he's got great mobility here in his hamstrings to allow him to come up this high. The final progression in this exercise series is to add a body saw to it, much like we did in the previous workout. So here you can see he's sawing back, opening up further, and driving up high into that pike. An incredibly demanding position, not just for his upper body and his lower body, but especially for the core. It's demanding, it's effective, it's super functional, and it's a great way to finish the military workout.